Now we'll move on to discuss the different endocrine organs, including the hormones they produce and the targets. The hypothalamus pituitary system. This is the master control center of endocrine physiology. Hormones and signals from the hypothalamus drive pituitary hormone secretion. And the hypothalamus receives nerve inputs from higher brain centers and then in turn exerts its effects on the pituitary gland. Examples of hormones and factors produced by the hypothalamus include number one, growth hormone releasing hormone. This targets the release of growth hormone from the pituitary gland. Number two, prolactin inhibiting factor. This factor inhibits the release of the pituitary prolactin. Within the hypothalamus are autonomic centers that control the endocrine cells of the suprarenal medulla. The major gland of the endocrine system is the pituitary gland. This gland is housed in a bony window known as the cella tracheia at the base of the brain. The pituitary gland is divided anatomically into an anterior and posterior lobe and each of these lobes produces and secretes different hormones. The hypothalamus and pituitary gland are connected through the infundibulum. Let's begin with the posterior lobe or the neurohypophysis. The posterior lobe of the pituitary receives stimulation through projections from the hypothalamus and through the local blood supply. There are two hormones produced by the posterior lobe, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. Antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, is stored in secretory vesicles awaiting release. The primary role of this hormone is to regulate body water composition. ADH reduces water clearance in the kidneys. Oxytocin is released during labor in pregnancy and during breastfeeding. During labor, the hypothalamus stimulates the release of oxytocin from this region of the pituitary and this hormone increases contractions in the uterus. The majority of the pituitary hormones are produced in the anterior lobe or the adenohypophysis. This is responsible for the production and release of a number of different hormones, including adrenocorticotropic hormone or ACTH. ACTH targets the adrenal glands, namely the adrenal cortex, and this causes the release of cortisol and other steroid hormones. These hormones are released in response to stress on the body. Number two, human growth hormone or HGH. This hormone is responsible for growth and development of infanthood and beyond. It's involved in anabolic processes such as bone growth and the growth and development of the internal organs and the brain. The third hormone produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland is thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. This hormone targets the thyroid gland and the blood levels of both thyroxin and triiodothyronine are influenced by the amount of TSH in the bloodstream. The fourth hormone is follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. This hormone is a glycoprotein that targets the ovaries in women and is involved in spermatogenesis in men. The fifth hormone is luteinizing hormone or LH. Luteinizing hormone is also a glycoprotein that targets the reproductive system in both males and females. In males, Luteinizing hormone stimulates testosterone production, and in females, it stimulates ovulation. The sixth hormone is prolactin. This is a peptide hormone principally involved in preparing the breast for milk production for nursing infants. The next endocrine gland we'll discuss is the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland, as depicted in this anterior view, is made up of a left lobe and right lobe that are separated by the isthmus. 
The thyroid gland is the largest endocrine gland in the body and it's located in the neck on the anterior surface of the larynx. The activity of the thyroid gland is controlled by the pituitary secretion of TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. It controls body metabolism and protein production. The thyroid gland itself produces thyroxine or T4 and triiodothyronine or T3. The element iodine is critical to the production of thyroxine and iodine is the first step in the biosynthesis of this hormone. This is the reason iodine was added to salt in North America to prevent a condition called goiter which is caused by iodine deficiency. Thyroid hormones are produced in the following way. Iodine enters the thyroid tissue and is sequestered inside cells as part of thyroglobulin. It's stored in the colloid within the thyroid gland and upon thyroid stimulation T3 and T4 are produced and released into the bloodstream. Once they enter cells, T4 is converted to T3, and T3 functions by increasing cardiac output and metabolism throughout the body. Thyroid hormone production. The hypothalamus and pituitary gland regulate thyroid hormone secretion. The levels of T3 and T4 in the blood provide a feedback loop and impact the production of TSH from the pituitary. When the levels of T3 and T4 are high, this inhibits TSH release. As T3 and T4 levels decrease, the opposite is true. Located on the posterior portion of the thyroid glands are the two pairs of parathyroid glands. The parathyroid glands produce parathyroid hormone or PTH. PTH is involved in calcium homeostasis. Parathyroid hormone causes the release of calcium into the bloodstream by stimulating bone osteoclast activity. The release of PTH is regulated by calcium levels in the blood. As blood calcium concentration increases, the release of PTH decreases. As blood calcium levels decrease to a certain concentration, in part due to deposition in bone, the PTH levels will increase. The thymus gland is located in the chest just behind the sternum. It's involved in immune function and the development and maturation of T cells. The thymus hormones include thymopoietin and thymosin. Thymopoietin is important for the maturation of T cells from precursor cells. This takes place in the thymus. Thymosin is also a hormone that matures T cells within the thymus before they enter the general circulation. Both the actual kidneys and the heart have endocrine function in the body. The kidneys themselves play a role through the secretion of calcitriol. Calcitriol is released by the kidneys in response to the parathyroid hormone. This hormone stimulates the absorption of calcium and phosphate in the digestive tract. Atrial natriuretic peptide. This is made in cardiac muscle cells and is released in response to an increase in blood pressure or blood volume. Atrial natriuretic peptide stimulates water and sodium loss in the kidneys to decrease volume and blood pressure. Blood sugar levels in the body are regulated by the pancreas. The pancreas itself is made up of a head and tail which are connected through the pancreatic duct. The pancreas is situated adjacent to the duodenum of the small intestine and the common bile duct from the liver and gallbladder pass through this region. The pancreas is physically attached and communicates with the small intestine. It has both endocrine and exocrine capabilities. The middle of the pancreas contains the pancreatic duct which has direct communication with the duodenum portion of the small intestine. The endocrine function of the pancreas is to regulate blood sugar levels. Insulin and glucagon are produced in cell clusters known as the islets of Langerhans. Pancreas blood glucose regulation. 
The pancreatic islets of Langerhans are the site for both insulin and glucagon production. The islets are clusters of different cell types, including alpha cells, which produce glucagon, and beta cells, which produce insulin. Insulin secretion is regulated primarily by the levels of blood sugar. Insulin and glucose have a reciprocal relationship. As blood glucose levels rise, the pancreas is stimulated to release insulin. Insulin acts on cells by increasing glucose transporter activity in the cell membrane. This increases glucose entry into cells, and this leads to a subsequent decrease in blood glucose levels. Glucagon, on the other hand, is released when blood glucose levels decrease. The pancreas also contains delta cells that produce somatostatin, and this slows the rate of food absorption. F cells produce pancreatic polypeptide, and this inhibits the gallbladder. The gonads are endocrine organs in the body, and they include the ovaries and testes. These are responsible for the development of men and women through the sex hormones testosterone and estradiol. The production of these hormones by the testes and the ovaries is under direct control of the hypothalamus pituitary system through negative feedback. This is depicted in the image on the right side of the slide. The hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormone, which in turn stimulates the pituitary gland. This leads to the release of LH and FSH, or luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, from the pituitary gland. These stimulate the gonads to produce the sex hormones. The sex hormones give feedback to the hypothalamus pituitary system to regulate their own production. In the male, the gonads are the testes and they produce androgens. Androgen is a generic term for hormones responsible for male physical characteristics. The primary androgen is testosterone. It's produced from the testes under control of the pituitary gland. In males, testosterone is responsible for the secondary sexual characteristics as well as facial hair, muscle mass, and deepening of the voice. In the female, the gonads are the ovaries, and they produce estradiol, or estrogen, and progesterone. These hormones, along with luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland, function to develop female characteristics and drive the menstrual cycle. Estrogen is produced by the granulosa cells in the ovary, and its level in the blood has a negative feedback on the hypothalamus pituitary system. Progesterone is produced in the corpus luteum, and its production is regulated by LH and FSH. The endocrine function of the placenta. The placenta is the sac that holds a developing baby in the uterus, and because the uterus and placenta share a capillary bed where the mother's blood and baby's blood exchange, this provides the opportunity for endocrine function. The nutrients, oxygens, etc. travel down the umbilical cord to the baby. The placenta produces hormones which stimulate the ovaries to maintain the necessary hormone production to sustain the pregnancy. The main hormones produced by the placenta are progesterone, human chorionic somatotropin or lactogen, and this affects the metabolism of the mother. Also, human chorionic gonadotropin. This drives ovary hormone production. The pineal gland. The pineal gland is a small endocrine gland inside the brain near the top of the brain stem. This gland produces melatonin and this hormone is important for a normal circadian rhythm and daily sleep cycle. The production and release of melatonin is stimulated by darkness, and this occurs when the photosensitive cells in the retina no longer signal the brain. 